Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Graybar G2 Talk webinar series. Um, today uh, is an exciting day as we talk about data centers again, uh, and we talk about optical fiber uh, in inside the data center. Uh, my name is Carl Griffith, and I'd like to welcome you all uh, to our webinar series. Uh, before we get started, there's a couple of things that I'd like to uh, uh, chat with you about. Uh, the first being that uh, this, this uh, webinar will be archived on graybar.com. In fact, all of the G2 Talk webinar series, is our, the, all of the presentations are archived on graybar.com. All you need to do is go to the front page of graybar.com, look for the G2 Talk webinar logo. Adjacent to that, you'll see an archive link. Click that link and it'll take you right to the archive. Uh, we will have Q&A in this session, so you'll be able to ask questions. On the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little icon that says Q&A on it. If you'll click that, a dialog box will open up. You can type your question in that dialog box and hit submit, and it'll come up over here to our team, uh, and then we'll go over those questions at the end of the seminar. So we will respond to your questions, and we'll do that when uh, our presentation is over this morning. Uh, the first uh, 50 people that log on to this webinar uh, live will get an uh, email from Graybar for a cup of coffee from a large national coffee chain in the United States. So look in your email later today and, uh, and see if you were one of the lucky first 50 people to get a cup of coffee. A little bit of information about Graybar. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar, Graybar is a distributor. Um, our uh, our mission statement is on the screen here. We help our customers power, network, and secure facilities with speed, intelligence, and efficiency. In this particular case, the facility today we're talking about is the data center. So we'll be talking about speed, intelligence, and efficiency in the data center as we talk about optical fiber inside the data center. Our presenter today is uh, Alfred Flores from uh, Burke Tech. Uh, Alfred's a friend of mine. We've known each other for several years. He's a subject matter expert. Uh, when it comes to optical fiber in inside the data center. As you can see on the screen, he's the pre-terminated optical fiber product manager for Burke Tech. We're very fortunate to have Alfred with us as a subject matter expert on optical fiber in the data center. So without taking any more of Alfred's time, I'm going to pass the baton to Alfred. Thank you, Alfred, for joining us today. Carl, uh, thank you very much, Graybar. Thanks for the opportunity. Folks, especially you, thank you so much for attending uh, the presentation, do me a favor, minimize your, your email for, for about 30 quick seconds. I promise I won't bore you, and there's a lot of information we're going to be going through, so please give me a little bit of your attention. So as you can see from the slide, we're going to be talking about 40, 100 gigabit uh, optical fiber uh, over primarily multimode and single mode, but let's go ahead and hit the charts. Do not disregard this and, and just blow it off, folks. Take a look at this. If you are looking for 40, 100 gigabit in your future, the information shown here is going to be essential to writing up your spec because if you specify in there uh, per IEEE I802.3BA and 40G base SR4, you have basically established the parameters that I want 40, 100 gigabit on multimode. I need OM3 fiber at least, and my distance and capabilities are up to these numbers. It sets all those kind of parameters, so don't ignore this. Look at these bullet points, whether you're going to be doing multi-mode on the first group of bullets or single mode on the other ones for extended reaches. This is useful information. Don't, uh, don't ignore it. Likewise, for the, the remaining portion of the standard, the KR section of this presentation is for the electronics in the back plane. This is inside that big half-million-dollar electronic box. This is where those folks with really, really thick glasses, even despite LASIK, these are, this is where they operate, and there's nothing we can do about this. So if you have trouble reading, uh, sleeping, read it. Otherwise, ignore this portion of the standard, unless if you're one of those uh, geeks. Uh, for the copper section, it specifies twin axe, folks, and the reach, as you can see on that minor bullet point, it says up to uh, seven meters. Realistically, it's going to be shorter distances than that, so the application here is is down rack from, from your electronic device or t uh, connecting two core devices to each other, uh, straight in or connect. That's what the copper portion is because of the distance. There are changes coming on, but a copper presentation is for another time. 
So we look at the standard once again. We're going to be talking or focusing primarily on the multi-mode and single mode, basically the optical fiber portion of the standard. Here's what the parameters are. A little bit more information, though. On the multi-mode side, notice it says the third little bullet point, MPO, otherwise known as MTP connectivity and parallel optics. The multi-mode portion is multiple fibers each way, at each at 10 gigabit. The single mode is CWDM, coarse wavelength division multiplexing, multiple wavelengths over a single fiber. And uh, the single mode usually uses uh, like LC or SC connectivity, whereas the multi-mode is the MPO connector. So before we start talking about multi-mode even more, or even single mode, you, you always hear about OM1, OM2, OM3. If you don't know where it comes and you're going to be writing a spec, well, here it is. ISO, IEC, 11801, blah, blah, blah. There's a table, table 27, I think somewhere midway down the standard. You'll see that table, and it specifies what the fiber type is, what the bandwidth is, and what its corresponding OM uh, value is. As you can see from that chart, back in the day when this was written, OM1 could be either 50 micron or 62.5, likewise for OM2. If you haven't had the chance to read uh, the, the 40 gigabit, 100 gigabit standard, you'll notice that for multi-mode, it specifies a minimum multi-mode minimum of OM3. So <coughs> keep that in mind as you move on towards spec. Uh, and OM4, although it's not listed in this in the in the ISO IC standard, it is listed under TI under 492 and, and the alphabet soup after that. It is OM4 specified in the USA. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about what those, at least on the multi-mode side, they mean. OM3 means 50 micron, and oh, by the way, it is the minimum level of multi-mode fiber allowed in this standard, the 802.3BA uh, Bravo Alpha standard. You see it's 50 micron, 2,000 megahertz, and you see what OM4 is. Notice something interesting about that middle bullet point. A lot of people, you, you tell them what's aqua jacket, and they say it's laser optimized. Well, it means a little bit more than that, but IEEE TIA-598, that's the fiber in the cable color code. It's what says your fiber shall be blue, orange, green, brown, aqua, you, uh, rose, and all that. And that's where that comes from. It also says that it, the recommendation is that to wear an aqua jacket, you should be compliant to TIA, blah, 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 AC. That corresponds to an OM3 fiber. So you know that if, at the very least to be standards compliant with this standard, if you see an aqua jacket on that cable, at the very least, you ought to know it's 50 micron OM3 if it's a standards compliant cable. Now, some people will give you a pink jacket if you want for it and ask for it. I'm coming the customer rules. But to be standards compliant, if it's OM3 and it's Aqua, it's good to go. Since I don't list it anywhere else, here's the lost budget for 40, 100 gigabit on multi-mode fiber. On OM3, 1.9 dB. And you can see the other bullet point. Folks, since we're talking MTP connectors and we're talking this kind of low loss budget, the days of field termination, although they are available for MPO connectors, those days are gone. It's pretty much a preterm world or splicing on, and I mean fusion splicing on, an MTP uh, pigtail onto your backbone cable. So either you have a splicer out in the field or you're going to go preterm. Keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about multi-mode 40 gigabit. We're talking 40 gigabit per the BA standard. And that means right now you, you, you might already have this installed in your facility. You got a 12 fiber uh, trunk with an MPO connector plugged in at each end into a cassette. In front of the cassette, you got your jumpers going to your devices. You could then take that, if it's on 3 glass or better, you can then in, uh, go from 1 gig, 10 gig to 40 gig simply by, by plugging uh, the jumper into a different port on your device that has 40 uh, gigabit capability. And instantly, the four middle fibers go dark, the four on either end go in, into transmit receive mode, and you are ready to go for 40 gig, uh, gigabit capability on multi-mode fiber on OM3 glass or better. Now remember, I said it's because of the loss budget, you don't have to do low loss, but it sure would be a recommendation uh, and good advice for you to accept that. Uh, do not think you only actually need the eight fibers, but most every installation that you know about today, it's a 12 fiber or 20 or a multiple of 12 fibers. So the, you're looking at this kind of configuration for the most part. All right, next slide. Once again, it's a repeat of the previous slide, but, but I wanted to give you a, a view of the end face of the connector, of that MPO connector. 
And as you can see, if you pretend that you are the electronic port on your big old switch and you are about to be uh, receiving an MTP connector, you are transmitting on the, on the right four fibers and you are receiving 10 gig light on the left and the middle stuff just goes dark. That's all there is to it. It's that simple, folks. So what do we do when we talk about hmm, 100 gigabit? Well, that same trunk that earlier days was 1 gig, 10 gig, and you were using all 12 fibers, making six pairs out of them for transmit receive, and then you converted it into a single 40 gig channel, and the middle four fibers went dark. Well, guess what? You can use it a third time. But now it's either a transmit leg or it's a receive leg. So you've got to double up. You don't lose anything. You, heck, you've, re, you've reused it three times now, but if you go by the BA standard, and the, way, the reason I keep emphasizing 802.3 BA, it's the original standard released back in 2010. They are, the, the standards folks are working on the BM, Bravo Mike standard, that's probably going to be published next year, and it's got a few changes coming their, our way, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So BA, as published in 2010, says 10 fibers, each 10 gig, and voila, you have reached 100 gigabit capability. Life is good. So what do we look for connectivity? If you haven't noticed yet, folks, in the multi-mode world for 40, uh, 100 gigabit Ethernet, it's an MPO style connector, otherwise known as an MTP. Whether it's a 12 fiber configuration as you see up there, or a 24 fiber on the bottom. Same size, the only difference is double row of tiny, 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 tiny little holes between the two big holes. By the way, those little black holes on either end of the connector, those are there for an insertion of an alignment pin. Whenever you have two MPO connectors, folks, keep this in mind. You got those little 12 fibers in between or even 24 fibers in between. Whenever two of those connectors plug against each other, it is essential that they line up fiber to fiber because if they tilt or, or, or turn even a little bit, most of those fibers are going to be shooting into plastic, and that's the function of the alignment pin. But only one of these connectors must have the pin. It really doesn't matter which one, but one of them must. You can put two uh, what's called female or pinless connectors together, but they, there's enough slop in, in, the, in, in the connection that they will twist, and you are shooting, or you basically create an attenuator. So remember, one of these connectors, whenever they, they combine together, has to be pinned or the, and the other one must not. So here you go. That's what they look like for 100 gigabit Ethernet multi-mode. Let's talk about single mode. You can tell it's single mode because it's yellow and it says so on the top of the slide. 40 gigabits is what we're talking about here. So now we have one fiber going each way, just like back in the old days of 1 gig, 10 gig. The only difference with single mode is each we're using four different lasers on each fiber. And each of those lasers is at 10 gig. And the connector you use is, is what's typically today is LC, although you might be able to find some Sam Charlie connectors still out there. So keep that in mind. This is the most cleanest solution out there if you have to go a longer distance. And I'll show you what those distances are in a little bit. So here it is for 100 gigabit. The difference being it's still four wavelengths, but look at that, 25 gigabits of data on each, or a laser on each uh, wavelengths for those lasers uh, on the same fiber and you have achieved 100 gigabit on that system. It's still an LC connector, so it's not an MTP connector. Now we get into some interesting data, folks. If you've been reading emails, you might want to stop for a second because the next slide is going to make your jaw drop. This is a graph of the same actual MSRP data of transceivers of the various grades uh, derived from that website I show you on the screen as of at the, the end of July 2013. This is the, these two charts are exactly the same data, folks. The only difference is the top one is on a logarithmic scale. If you take a look at the left scale, you'll notice that it's like a multiple of 10 every time you go up to the level. I needed to do that to be able to show you relatively the, the price difference because if you do it on a straight dollar scale as shown on the bottom graph, you notice that the left three are almost un, unviewable on the scale of this chart because that the single mode stuff, particularly the 100 gigabit one on the right, it's so uh, pricey at this time that, that it just dwarfs all of the other numbers. Use this as a reference, folks, because we're going to start talking money. 
as far as 4,800 gigabit is concerned. All right. Traditional rule of thumb, you can read the bullet points easily, but that's pretty much it. Every tenfold increase in speed kind of corresponds to about a threefold traditionally increase in cost. Now, we're using the baseline uh, of, of today 10 gig multimode, so 10G base SR is what everybody's deploying now. You saw it on the chart, so it's, it's, it's today's de facto standard of what's being deployed. So it's our baseline, it's the most commonly available cheapest, biggest bang for the buck transceiver out there. So how much would it cost us to go from 10 gig multi-mode to 40 gig multi-mode? You've read the, bu the, bu the bullet points just below, the sample channel cost, and those da data numbers for the transceivers were taken from the previous chart, and those transceiver costs were taken off the websites from that, that distributor at the end of July. So these numbers are about as current as you can get. If you want to visit that site and start looking for yourself, I doubt they've changed any. So to go from a 10 gig, you, you just basically installed a 10 gig and you've been running it for a, day, a few years. Now it's time to upgrade to 40 gig. Your only increase in cost would be switching out the port, assuming your switch, your switch can handle it. You pop out the old 10 gig port, you pop in the new 40 gig port, for 1500 bucks, voila, you are now 40 gig capable. If you didn't have the cable, we toss in the cable cost, overall channel cost, $2,700. That's just an approximation, folks. Okay, but I'd say it's pretty close. So for a channel to go from 10 gig uh, uh, multi mode to 40 gig multi mode, we're looking at $2,700. Let's look at the single mode for 40 gig. Single mode for 40 gig. If we go from 10 gig single mode to 40 gig single mode, it's not a mistype. If you, if you take the previous channel cost numbers for 40 gigabit single mode, it's about 19-fold increase. As you read the bullet points, you should see you save a lot on the cable. Whoopee! Your cable cost is half of that of the multi-mode one. But your transceivers are out of this world. As you look at it, it's about four times. 40 gig on single mode is about four times 40 gig on multi-mode. So if you're doing it for short reach, i.e. within the reach of multi-mode, this is not the smart way to go. But if you have to go to locations that are beyond the reach of multi-mode, that's where your number is. Keep that in mind, folks. We're not even going to talk about what this would do, this would cost to go 100 gig on single mode. But if you want to fantasize a little bit, transceiver, 100 gig, single mode, about 58,000 MSRP right now. Double that up, there's your link. But the good news is you can go 10 gig and 100 gigabit. Ain't that a deal? Just a table to summarize all the data, folks. Just a, a quick summary with comparison against 10 gig, showing you the reaches and relative uh, costs. So there you have it. But as you look at this, uh, the next point I want to emphasize, something you don't really consider, but you ought to, and it's a simple slide, I realize that. But look, looking at your service life, particularly with an optical fiber, infrastructure, you're looking at about 10 to 20 years. Keep that 10 to 20 years as you look at this chart. Notice where we are right now, where the, the blue section is starting to take over. That's 10 gig, taking over from 1 gig. You know it's true, the marketplace reflects this. Notice how the forecast is for 10 gig to be, I love this word, ubiquitous uh, in the marketplace in just a couple of years from now and then 40 gig really kicks in, and then 100 gig just behind it. As you look at this, 2017, 2018 is five years from now, one-fourth of your estimated fiber lifetime. If you're not putting in the good stuff now, you're going to be ripping it out by then because you're already looking at 40, 100 gigabit in the next five, six years. This chart is compelling, the previous one as well. If you're, not, if you're going in for infrastructure install, folks, do it right minimum OM3, preferred OM4, and here's why. As you look at this slide, this is data taken from, uh, you, uh, maybe you all heard about it, the plug fest, the interoperability uh, testing done at the University of New Hampshire periodically, almost every year, where bleeding edge electronics makers bring their wares and plug it into racks and supply power and hope the things don't short out and infrastructure types bring in their cabling and hardware and stuff, and everybody plugs their stuff to everybody and hope it works to, show, to verify that it is, in fact, interoperable. And what we did at Berktech, we took off-the-shelf cable, OM3 or OM4, 
nothing special about the cable, off the shelf, and we put MTP connectors on them. The only thing we did with the MTP connectors is we verified each and every one of them was 0.35 dB loss or less. That's it, nothing special beyond that. Just a typical low loss assembly. And they went over there and we, and we started plugging them in one after the other between pieces of equipment. As you look at the lower section of that chart, the 40 gig section, there's two, you know, the lighter yellow section with OM3 and the grayer section is OM4. So as you look at the OM3 40 gig, you'll see that that orange box uh, for the stand says, you will be able to achieve 100 meters with a pair of connectors, one on each end at 100 gigabits, at, at 40 gigabits on OM3 fiber. What we actually discovered was that we could pretty much double that on OM3 glass. So you can see right off the bat that at least at this test and, and other tests have verified this, the standard is pretty conservative. You know, I mean, the standard is what the standard is. Real world, we're seeing double the distance. But look at what happens at OM4, folks. The standard says you shall be able to achieve 150 meters with a connector at each end. Look at that big blue bar all the way across the slide. It's out to 800 meters. We ran out of cable. Not only that, look at that number below that, 10 connector pairs. We basically connected one assembly to another assembly to another assembly until we ran out, and we achieved 800 meters with 10 connector pairs and, sim and the signal, the no, the no, no drop below uh, tw uh, 10 to the negative 12 standard. Now, this is not to say that the standard allows this. This is just to show you what real world on uh, equipment and capability is out there. So you, it's very conservative, but what you should take away from this is not that you're, you can reach 800 meters. Nobody's going to be able to warrant that, at least not in the near term, until more data comes out. But the tremendous thing you should see is 10 connector pairs. Even if you get one connector pair, what you, that gives you, in your, in, especially in a data center, is the flexibility to reconfigure your system. Now it's no longer a point-to-point -point system. Now it's a, it's a potential for at least, a, at the very least, an interconnect, if not setting up a cross-connect, so you can reconfigure it completely uh, if you use two connector pairs, all of them low loss. So that's, uh, not only is that an argument for using OM4, it's also a reminder, don't go cheap on the connectors, use low loss. On um, the top side you see for 100 gigabit, it's, it's the same story, not as massively uh, large. It's only for four connector pairs on OM4, but the same argument is there, folks. OM4 gives you overhead. It gives you flexibility. It gives you options. Keep that in mind. All right. We're going to go over real quick three slides about traditional and uh, current and future um, data centers as far as 40, 100 gigabits concerned. Back in the day, you'll remember, it's all field terminated. You remember, everybody's seen that picture of that row of, of cabinets with 5,000 jumpers going in every direction, basically spaghetti uh, hanging off of a rack. That was back in the day. Primary ST connectors, some SE, maybe even a few innovative LC connectors, all field terminated back in the day. Today, as we mentioned earlier, it's all cassette to cassette with an MP, MTP trunk in between. That's what's going on. Then jumpers to your electronics. Okay? Future. The cassettes are going to go, uh, especially on the data centers, they're going to go bye-bye. It's going to be an MPO world if you're going to do it on multi-mode. I'm not saying you won't do single mode because some requirements are going to be beyond the reach of the multi-mode fiber. But for the most part, it's going to be MTPs across the board. So your trunk cables will be MTPs. Your patch cords will be MTPs. And don't forget your loss budget down there. So, folks, it's, 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 a, it's a more constricted world, and it's going to mandate pre-terminated assemblies. So you better know your distances. All right, let's go uh, give a quick overview of how you can go from today's 1 gig, 10 gigabit to, to tomorrow's uh, 100 gigabit future. So let's go Hopefully, what you are encountering today or what you're specking out today is this typical configuration. A cassette at each end, an MTP trunk cable in between, and then jumpers out to your gear, whether it's a cross-connect or your electronics. And today, typically, it's a 12-fiber MTP connector. I emphasize that because you, you saw the other image. It was 24-fiber. Here's something that we need to talk about, folks. Actually, the next slide will show you even better. Remember I talked to you about 
pinned and pinless MTP connectors? Well, here's the situation. You've grown enough or, if you some, or you've developed a requirement for a high-end electronics box with high-density uh, blades. Well, your system that we saw previously, cassette to cassette, you can still reuse it. At, a, at the very least, you would basically have to replace one cassette with, uh, at, the, at the switch with a MTP adapter, plug it in, and on the other end of it, you just do a har what's called a harness or a hydra or a spider. There's a lot of names for it, but basically it's an MPO on one end and usually LCs on the other. As you can see on the picture be beside, that's a Brocade 48000. Each of those blades is 48 ports, so you're looking at 96 fibers cascading down an inch and a half diameter array. So there's six of those being used on that image, if you can see it. So you can see it's a very dense situation. You're using a lot, a lot of harnesses. What I want to emphasize here, folks, is something you may want to write down if you don't already know it. Traditionally, in our market, in our industry, MPO trunk cables are pinless. That means they don't have those pins. So the trunk between the cassette and the adapter panel has no pins on any of those connectors. If you look down on the cassette, if you were able to grab this bad boy, unscrew it, pop off the lid, and pull out the MTP that's inside, you would see that that one is pinned. Remember, you have to have one of them pinned to be able to align all those fibers together. So that's why you always plug in a female MTP into the back of a cassette because the cassette has the pin. Well, folks, when 40 gigabit, 100 gigabit comes into your world, the ports on your electronics are going to be pinned. So whatever you plug into it, that jumper you plug into that MTP port, better not have pins or you're going to create yourself a very effective attenuator. Keep that in mind. So we've moved on from the, the harness world and now we're looking to move into 40 gigabit. Remember what I mentioned here? So you drop the cassettes on either end. Notice you get to reuse the, the, the infrastructure, the trunk cable, and, and if you were able to uh, implement a own force solution, you got the best of all possible worlds at this point. So all you do is you don't do anything with the trunk other than plug it into an MTP adapter panel. And to be able to do 40 gigabit, you just plug in your MTP patch cord. Voila. Now, if you, uh, as you look at each of those panels, notice one of them better be pinned on the MTP connectors and the other one better not be. And those that jumper on the other end of the jumpers on either on top or bottom, that one better not be pinned because it's going into the ports of the electronics, presumably. So I know it can be confusing, folks, but don't lose sight of that. One of them has to have pins. Okay, let's go quickly now and finish up because this is the simple part, folks. 100 gigabit, just double up, just like the slide, many, uh, slides previously showed. Here's your option. Plug it in, and this is using 12 fiber MPO trunk cables. So you just use, use jumpers with 12 fiber MPOs. Great. Next one, what happens if you have a high density or 24 fiber port? It's not that hard, folks. Just do a special jumper, one with two 12s going in and one 24 going out. You're done. You've just migrated the path. Or, you know, you can do it with 24 fiber trunks if you want to be looking that far forward today. You have options, folks, but it's all predicated upon, at least on the multi-mode side, uh, on MTP-based trunk assemblies and starting off with cassettes. But you do have options, and you get to reuse a whole bunch of it. Now, right, a few more quick slides, folks, and then we'll be off to lunch. Latest developments. On the MTP, on the multi modes I should say, world, Remember, the, the reaches for 40 gigabit were specified at 100, 150 meters. Well, you know, people are starting to realize that, yeah, we can could, we could actually do better uh, today, and everybody's realizing that you can do at least 300 meters, maybe even 400 meters on OM4. You can actually do better than that, folks, as that slide showed you previously. But the standard, the, the acceptance in the industry is, yeah, we, really, we knew we could do better, and now it's being shown to be real because there's many 40 gig and a few hundred gig, gigabit installations already going out. Now, here's something that's rather compelling. Remember, 802.3BA says 10 fibers for 100 gigabit, 10 fibers each at 10 gigabit. The new standard that's being uh, ready today is called BM, 802.3BM, Bravo Mike. To do 100 gigabit, it's four fibers but at 25 gigabit. It's kind of like the single mode stuff. The distances being assumed right now or are specified are shorter by about 30 meters or 50 meters. So that is in the works, folks. It looks like it's going to happen. 
uh, but your reach is going to be a little bit different. But now instead of doubling up on your fiber infrastructure, you get to reuse it exactly as is. Last one on this is a little bit on single mode fiber. Everybody saw the price, knows what the pricing is on single mode folks. They're not ignorant of the cost involved. So they are trying to develop a shorter reach solution that just happens to be less expensive. They are working hard towards that. The problem is they can't agree on how to do it. And they have a deadline of September of this year to be able to make this portion, the single mode short reach, into the BM standard. So if they don't come to a decision by September, it's unlikely that it will make it into the publication of the standards uh, next year. And then it's going to be a while before it becomes a standardized solution. It may be a deployed solution. The customer can always buy it, whatever is out there, but it won't be a standardized solution. All right, so last slide, folks. Recommendations. Go multi-mode. If you have to go a longer distance, you have no choice. You're going to have to do single mode. But for every other uh, connection option, multi-mode is, in fact, your cheapest, biggest bang for the buck. If you haven't done, uh, in, uh, started with a tr uh, cassette trunk, cassette installation, you saw from the migration plan that that's your best route to go from 1 gigabit today uh, to 100 gigabit in the future. And the fact that you get to reuse so many of the parts, it's a green solution. So at this point, Carl, if you could come on and, and if there's any questions, we can get them started. Thank you very much, uh, Alfred. And uh, yeah, we have plenty of questions that have been coming in. I'd like to remind everybody that if you have a question, just click the little icon on the uh, bottom of your screen that says Q&A. A, a, a dialog box will open. Type your question in there, and then we'll receive it at this end, and we'll try to get to your question today. Uh, so the first one that came in, uh, uh, Alfred, had to do with testing. So John wanted to know if there was a test series uh, that, he sh uh, that he should ask for for 802.3ba on single mode fiber. So um, is, is there a testing procedure for a single mode when we're up here in the, uh, in the 40, 100 gig range here with single mode fiber? No. At so there is no one that I'm aware of. Because remember, it's multiple okay. wavelengths, so be able to discreetly check each one is going to be problematic. The best, te uh, but your loss budget is going to be higher for single mode. So it's, can you test them? Yes. Will it be a cheap field test set? Probably not. It's going to be a limited installation. So essentially, I'm not saying you have to, but initially folks are just going to have to rely on the test gear, not the test gear people, but the electronics to verify that their transceivers are good to go and the assembly, preterm assembly manufacturers to verify the losses on their fibers. All right. Now, John, John, I know John asked that question, so if he's still on the line, I wanted to let John know that we'd like to respond to you via email. Uh, we, want to, we want to check with uh, one of our test equipment uh, vendors uh, and help verify that uh, question for you. Uh, the other, well, the other question, another question came in from a different John, and uh, he would like to, he'd like to know about couplers. Um, so we have these bulkhead fittings. Sometimes it allows us to do trunk to jumper or trunk to trunk. Um, can you tell us about, the, are there various pin arrangements? Do some of these couplers have pins on both sides or are some on pin on one side and not pinned? Can you get these, can you get these couplers pinned and unpinned in different various configurations? No. The, the couplers that go into the panels are genderless. They, they're basically just a, a, a sleeve for you to plug in your connectors. The gender is always on the connector. All these couplers do is clip it to the back of the connector, pre prevent them from being accidentally pulled out. Mm -hmm. They do not align them. They don't do anything of the sort. It's only the connectors that are gendered, and, and that's it. The only thing that's available on the adapters, and here's, we didn't talk polarity because we only had 30 minutes, folks. Polarity is an hour discussion when you're talking about 40, 100 gigabit, and you better bring your, you better sleep at your Holiday Inn Express because it, it gets interesting. Uh, when you talk polarity and, and 40, 100 gig, it's interesting with 10 gig, but it's a different discussion. So we haven't talked about that. There are, only, there are only two differences in adapters for MPOs, the ones that are key up, key down, and the ones that are key up, key up. It's, it's, a, it's a whole other di discussion, so let's not get into that one right now, but those are the only two. Remember, they're genderless. The gender is on the MPO connectors. The only two versions of adapters that are out there are key up, 
key down, and then key up, key up. And to, and to right. reference a previous question, Carl, from John, you remember, I'm not saying you can't test them. There's hundreds of, of, of vendors out there with single mode test sets that operate at 1310. You will be able to shoot down that fiber and, 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 uh, and test its, its length, its fiber, its performance, its loss. What you will not be able, what, what will be expensive to do is to test each of the actual wavelengths that are going to be shooting through there. You will be able to verify the fiber, but you will not be able to verify the fibers at the specific wavelengths that your electronics are going to use, at least not cheaply. Great. Thanks for answering that question. And it just tells us that if we're dealing with trunks, we need to pay attention to those pins, that they, the pins don't appear on the adapters. Um, uh, Jose uh, wanted asked a question about is the presentation uh, going to be made available, and I want to remind everybody online uh, that the presentation is uh, available on, or will be available tomorrow on graybar.com. If you look for the G2 Talk logo on the homepage of graybar.com, you can find the uh, the presentation there. Uh, John asks a number another question. And it has to do with the number of pairs. Uh, or, uh, so let's, I'll just read it the way it's written, uh, uh, Alfred. It says, uh, so on a large multi-building campus running 100 gigabit, uh, we'll take 48 strands, 24 pairs of OM4 per connection or two strands, one pair of single mode. I would need 24 times the number of four strands in my strand than I would uh, then I would use single mode. Is that true? That doesn't sound right to me. Uh, there's a little bit of chittering on the channel, but I, I, the math doesn't add up to me. I, I, I would be able to see that question, and John, if I could respond to it via email, and we can post it later on for, for the crowd to review. Okay. Then we will respond to John via email uh, afterward, afterwards, and uh, we'll answer his question uh, directly. Uh, and then his question is a, is a conceptual question here, and I, there's going to be a lot of variables here, uh, Alfred, but is a general rule of practice, and John is asking this, should he use single mode between built-ins and stay with multi-mode inside the data center? Yes. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, lots of questions about whether the... Uh, presentation will be made available, and uh, again, you can go up to graybar.com and get that. Um, the, I guess where this is, a, we talked about couplers and pins and no pins, Alfred, and Don wants to know, does that mean the, electroni the electronics will always be pinless? No, no, no. The electronics, the ports, the transceiver ports, on 40, 100 gigabit will be pinned with a pins inside. Electronics will have pins. All right. Great. That clears that up. The slides will be available. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Alfred Dick wants to give you some kudos. He said you did a great job. Um, Thanks. Let's see. On... Um, I think we got a question here from uh, uh, David Finn, and I'm going to we'll respond. David, we're going to respond to you via uh, email on your question. Uh, there's a question here about spectrum analyzers. Uh, an optical spectrum analyzer will test multi-mode WDM and CWDM wavelengths. Uh, are they ever used for data center testing? Have you ever seen that? Like I said, oh, they're. They are available, but if that, that, if that person could pay how much he paid for that unit, I think everybody in the field would realize, okay, moving on. Okay. Uh, Jonathan asked this question. I have uh, two rows of racks. Do I lose dBs or do I have dB loss if I place both MTP on both rows and connect individual fibers? that one again. I have two rows of racks. Do I lose dB loss? Is there going to be some dB loss if I place both MTP 
on both rows and connect individual fibers? Well, we're, start, we're talking about a minimal dis, difference in distance. I mean, it, the, measure, the measurement would, would, would show more error than, than the actual loss. So I think if I understand this correctly, it would, that would be a, a, no, a no increase in loss on the application. All right. And then Bill asked this question. Is it safe to say if you are using MTP to require 40 gig, you will need a 12 strand OM3 or OM4, and for 100 gig, you will need 24 strands? The wording is, 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 is special here. Required to have eight fibers for 40 gig and 20 for uh, 100 gig. What is very, very much the standard, the fact, the default standard in our industry is we do multiples of 12. So you can order an 8 fiber cable, you can order a 24 fiber, but it's very likely you will be the only one ordering the cable with the corresponding cost for making it. All right, great. Well, that's all the questions we have. I wanted to remind everybody that uh, the presentation is, will be archived on graybar.com. Go to the front page of graybar.com and you can get, uh, 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 get the presentation there. Uh, Alfred, we want to thank you for your time. Remember that uh, the first 50 people will get an email for a cup of coffee at a major coffee chain, and we're glad to offer you that, so check your email uh, later today. If we can be helpful to you in any way, please give your Graybar sales representative a call call. We'll be glad to help you any way we can. Again, thank you, Alfred and the Burke Tech team for putting together a, a, a very good uh, presentation about uh, data center optical fiber connectivity uh, for us today. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.